The most shocking mystery in the history of television has been unveiled. Who is Sauron? The Lord of the Rings identity has been shrouded in darkness since the beginning of The Rings of Power. The whole world has been shouting and screaming at their televisions in a frenzy not heard since Who shot J.R.? Who killed Laura Palmer? And who is that? Now, after eight gripping must-watch episodes, the truth is not out there. But here, the Nameless One has a name. The Dark Lord has entered the light. Who is he? Here is a roundup of all the Sauron suspects and how Amazon built towards the most satisfying climax and unpredictable twist in all of television. Waldreg's first words are poison. Literally, poison more likely. His words do not get any sweeter. Hey, baby, you know I'm talking about look good on your feet. You know, look better, better, better on my, my bed. They are full of anti-elf bile, misogyny, and mumbling. In a scene straight out of Shawshank, Waldreg's villainy escapes. Sauron! It is a power fashioned for our ancestors, by his master's own hand. A beautiful servant he was lost, but shall return. Have you heard of him, lad? Have you heard of Sauron? Up until this point, Waldreg was just a typical old white sexist male. Now, he's a Sauron groupie. Or is he Sauron himself? Waldreg cannot accept progressive new leadership, so begs to join the whitest, out of datest males in Middle Earth the Orc King and his band of merry white orcs. Acceptance into the Orc Club requires sacrifice. Spill the blood of the boy who spilled his drink. No spillage goes unpunished. Waldra gets his revenge and joins his orc brothers and sisters. Who is responsible for unleashing hell on Middle-earth? Waldreg, of course. Or should we call him Sauron? A wizard without a name? Big red flag. Or is it a big red herring? The only other wizard who must not be named was... Lord Voldemort. Could this one be the Lord of the Rings? He crashes into Middle-earth in a fiery blaze of glory, wearing only a loincloth. The scorched earth looks like the eye of Sauron. Very suspicious. When engaging in conversational intercourse with the female Frodo, his screams are not orgasmic, but blood-curdling. Only an evil as great as Sauron could possibly possess such a demonic voice. The demon even eats like one when he goes full Timon and Pumbaa. In the forest, he dances with wolves and smacks the floor, releasing a shockwave with the same intensity as Sauron in the Fellowship. He then channels another infamous villain, Mr. Freeze. Everything freezes. In the aftermath of Mount Doom's eruption, he erupts on this tree, toppling it onto a poor defenseless Harfoot. This wizard is a monster, and only deserving of an apple, a rotten one. The tree later rains apples, but the damage has been done. No one is fooled. This nameless wizard could be the nameless one, the Sauron. Halbrand is a white knight in shining armour. When Galadriel is stranded at sea, he is the first to greet her aboard, and does not stand in the way of a strong, independent woman. When sharks attack, he fashions a rescue boat, leaves everyone else as shark bait, and pulls Galadriel to safety. During a fierce storm, instead of watching Galadriel die a slow, agonizing underwater death, he dives to free her. If he is Sauron, he has a funny way of showing it. Of all the white males in Middle-earth, he is the most heroic, the most human, and the most you would like to meet down the pub for a drink. Time and time again, he is willing to sacrifice himself for Galadriel and the greater cause. He may struggle to get a word in edgeways or make decisions with the chief elf around, but he is otherwise an all-around nice guy. Of all the Sauron suspects, he is the least suspicious, so we can rightly write him off as Sauron. Appearances can be deceiving. Do not let Largo's short stature and humble nature throw you off the scent. There is plenty of evidence to point the way to Sauron. In his very first scene, he is carrying a white rabbit. A massive clue. Everyone knows that if you follow the White Rabbit, you will find yourself in Wonderland. Or Mordor. Rabbits are associated with witches. Why not the Witch King of Angmar, the leader of the Nazgul? A short time later, Largo is putting up a hammock, but loses his footing. 
when the wizard not named Gandalf plays tic-tac-toe. None of the other Harfoots lose their feet. Why is Largo the only one who rolls his ankle? Perhaps white magic only affects dark magic. Despite a broken ankle, he is quickly healed as if by magic. He leads the pack through the woods, but disappears when a pack of wolves attack the wizard. Coincidence? Or a cunning plan. Again, when the tree almost crushes an innocent Harfoot to death, he stands idly by, watching with the face of pure guilt. He proudly announces a sudden, bountiful harvest after the White Wizard is gone. A celebration. For he is Sauron. Half human, half elf. 100% Sauron. Elrond deceives at every turn. The Lord of Rivendell claims to be Middle-earth's finest poet, and yet his prose is less Shelley and more second grade. In an early conversation with Galadriel, she calls him a politician, and yet he has to use hard labour, not soft skills, to reach Durin's ear. In the Battle of the Hammer, Elrond looks like a stiff breeze would blow him over, yet more than holds his own against the much more muscular Durin. Later, Elrond reveals he lost on purpose. From where does he draw such brute strength? When he discovers Durin's mind has Mithril, the precious metal stronger and lighter than steel, his ears prick up as if he has visions of the future. He concocts a plot that, no matter what, the Mithril will be his. The lust for Mithril lands him in prison, turns Durin against his father, and he even wakes up a sleeping giant. But he will stop at nothing to get his hands on his prey. In the greatest twist in Middle-earth history, is the Lord of Rivendell actually the Lord of the Rings? No one tosses a dwarf, and no one would suspect one of being Sauron. But there are some telltale signs that Durin could be lying. In his very first scene, he is wearing a ring that looks suspiciously familiar, and his hammering technique screams Sauron. The form is identical. After beating Elrond, he introduces his wife Deza, who has him completely under the thumb. He may be the Dwarf King, but he'll never rule his home throne. Sauron never mentions a wife in any of Tolkien's works. Perhaps his wife was so dominant that he compensates by wanting to dominate Middle-earth. When Elrond betrays Durin's trust and says, Forget our promise, I'm taking the Mithril, Durin reacts like all cuckold husbands would. Ah, oh, whatever, it's yours. At some point, it's possible Durin reaches breaking point, lets out all his fire and fury, divorces Deza, swears vengeance on the Mithril-stealing elves, and becomes the Dark Lord, the Lord of the Rings. Future King Farazon's evil is apparent from day one. He interrupts his wife Muriel, and makes the decision himself on Galadriel and Halbrand's stay in Numenor. The patriarchal Farazon rouses a rabble of white males in a populist, anti-elf speech that would make even Chancellor Palpatine blush. Behind the scenes, he plots the destruction of all elves, and can hardly contain his wicked excitement when he hears his wife is leaving him for Middle-earth. In all conversations with his virtuous queen and the godly Galadriel, he wants to share his opinion and have his say in any decision-making. Unacceptable behaviour in Middle-earth, unacceptable behaviour in the modern world. Why doesn't he just stand aside and let the women do all the talking? Farazon may not only be the future king of Numenor, but the future Lord of the Rings. He checks every box in the 21st century villain handbook. Old, white and male. If he is not Sauron, then Sauron has real competition for remaining the most evil of evils in Middle-earth. Who else could be Sauron but the whitest male in Middle-earth, Adar, the King of the Orcs? His evil knows no bounds, for he is industrializing Middle-earth, enslaving elves, and transforming all black orcs into white ones. He tells Arondir that he is no god, at least, not yet. When Waldreg calls him Sauron, he goes full dead man and chokeslams him into the ground, but does not confirm or deny his identity. Later, he tasks Waldreg with turning on the Mount Doom tap, and we all know that only Darth Vader and Sauron love to reside near volcanoes. 
In his interrogation by Galadriel, he reveals he killed Sauron, but Galadriel does not believe it, and she knows better than anyone. The Dark Lord would never admit to his dark arts. As the orcs chant his name, Adar sits before Mordor as its creator, its founder. But is he? It's Sauron. In Episode 8, the Middle-earth shattering truth is finally revealed and is more shocking, more twisted, more unveiling than any grand reveal in the history of film and television. After two months of speculation and gripping tension, the curtains are opened and we find out in the first 22 minutes you are Lord Sauron! It was the homeless, nameless wizard all along. Case closed, mystery solved, or is it? Galadriel's Mind Palace is in overdrive, already established as Middle-earth's great elf detective, superior in her investigative intellect than any mind from Baker Street, she starts to put it all together, piece by piece. Casting her noble mind to the Harfoots, the Dwarves, the Elves, and the Wizarding World, she deduces that Sauron lies closer, much closer than anyone could have guessed. The greatest hint is when a certain shipwrecked Lost King takes a keen interest in the forging of the rings by Celebrimbor. Not only is he interested, he makes astute observations and even suggests a method, an alloy, for turning a little mithril into a lot. Hmm. Galadriel urgently sends out Watson to find out if Halbrand really is the lost heir to the Southland's throne, or something much more sinister. Watson returns at light speed with the truth, and the greatest elf Middle-earth has ever known confronts Halbrand alone in a second location. The king had no heir, tell me your name. I have been awake since before the breaking of the first silence. In that time, I have had many names. Sauron pleads with Angel Gabr Gladriel to forgive him. If ever I was to be forgiven, then I had to wheel everything that I had helped ruin. No penance could ever erase the evil you have done. All others look on you with doubt. I alone can see your greatness. You would make me a tyrant. I would make you a queen. I will never be at your side. Sauron does not take the rejection lightly. Sauron lives because of you! The most shocking revelation in the history of Middle-earth is revealed. Sauron became Sauron and became obsessed with the One Ring because Galadriel turned down his marriage proposal. If only he had chosen a more romantic place to propose than a raft in shark-infested waters. Hell hath no fury like a Sauron scorned. In the pantheon of film and television mysteries, J.R., Laura Palmer, and the lost polar bear can now step aside for the Sauron mystery has made them history. Over eight dramatic weeks, the world was caught up in a guessing game frenzy. Is it the Harfoot with the rabbit? The wizard with no name? Waldreg, the pub landlord? The king of the orcs? No, it was someone no one suspected or expected. Halbrand, the nicest white man in Middle-earth, outed as the most evil by Detective Galadriel. Not even M. Night Shyamalan himself could have devised such an outcome. It was so shocking, so unpredictable, that even Jane Austen would have scratched her head and turned off the television. The Rings of Power ends on a shocking high, and now just one mystery remains. How can they possibly top that in Season 2?